the world. And we call this topic, uh, water dripping with language. And that is one type of scaffold that we can provide for students and it helps them during collaborative structures. We also can utilize sentence frames. So for example, in my classroom, I didn't have time usually to make fancy sentence frames. So depending on what my activity was, I would just write it up on the board or you could even type it in the chat if you're having a Zoom meeting. Another way to explain a collaborative structure is simply that we are getting students talking and collaborating together to help build that knowledge that they need to be successful. So what is the rationale behind using a collaborative structure? Why would we want to utilize these in our classroom? Collaborative structures are important for all students, but they are essential for ELs. And we all have ELs in our buildings. And a lot of times students are really good at becoming observers of their learning and just watching. And although that is a very important part of learning, we want to make them become active participants in their learning as well. So observation is a part of learning, but becoming an active participant will really seal the deal. Another reason why we would wanna do a collaborative structure is simply because that is how we learn language. And whether we have ELs in our class or we are teaching high academic language in ELA or math, PE, science, Learning a language is not just remote memorization. We learn language through meaningful interactions. And so as a teacher, we have to create those meaningful interactions between students. Because when they have meaningful interactions, that's when they can put the puzzle pieces together to really get the big picture of what they're learning. Last, Scientific studies have shown that ELs spend less than 2% of their day in academic oral language development, less than 2%. And we know they're not gonna get that academic vocabulary at home if um, the parents aren't sure of what we're teaching. And so we need to make sure we develop that in school. So how can we do this? What can the teacher do to help incorporate collaborative structures and meet some of our students' needs? First, whenever we do any structure activity, we need to make sure that we're holding all students accountable. So whether that means having students share out in person or unmuting themselves, or having them write something or type, such as an exit slip or some sort of um, shared document, we need to make sure that after they've spoken with their coworkers or their teammates, that they are sharing out in some way. We also want to make sure that we are holding them to high expectations and getting a lot of words out of them. And we need to intentionally plan what these activities are going to look like. And there's a variety of ways we can do this. Today, we are going to share a variety of structures that you could use face-to-face -face or virtually. Um, a quick and easy structure is a 10-2. That is essentially when we have been teaching for about 10 minutes, sometimes less. We give the students two minutes to collaborate and share ideas. You can also plan for one-on-one -on -one interactions between students also small group or whole group, depending on if you're modeling a structure or if you are doing something for the first time or having them practice it in their groups. So I'm gonna head back to our presentation now and ask you a question about collaborative structures in your classroom.
Okay, so R10-2 for that pictorial is how much time do you think your ELs spend in academic oral language development? I'll go ahead and show responses. Okay. Nice. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Like Angeline said last time at our in our last um, interactive one, some rock stars are getting there. The fifty-one to seventy percent, thirty-one to fifty, seventy-one to ninety percent, and I bet some of this too. If you're in hybrid already, because you're in elementary or you are teaching um, some of the kiddos that are coming into the building, then there's way more opportunity for you and your students to develop some oral language. Um, but yeah, a lot of us in this A and B category, it's so hard to get them talking virtually. So we're hoping to um, provide some support for that. Okay, so um, the next strategy that we're going to talk about is a visual or virtual prediction reaction guide. And this is an adaptation um, from the original GLAD strategy, the prediction reaction guide that many of you have used in the past. And so um, the first thing that we're gonna do with this visual prediction reaction guide is activate some background knowledge. Um, from there, we're going to set a purpose for reading. We're going to read an article so we can have a shared learning experience. And then we're going to use this prediction reaction guide to have um, a post reading activity where we're processing vocabulary, because as we've mentioned, and as Corey discussed in her input, that we really need to have students practice using that academic language. Okay, so uh, if you want to go to the next slide, please. Oh. That works too, that's perfect. Okay, go ahead and yeah. So um, the so what we're gonna do, and I'm just gonna model it first, um, but this is what the visual prediction reaction guide could look like. And we'll talk about modifications um, in a little bit. But what I'm gonna ask you to do in just a moment is to go to a breakout room. And the three pictures that you see are indicators of something that we're going to read. And so um, if your breakout room is number three, you're just going to go to breakout room number three. And what I'd like you to do is discuss in your groups the pictures, and you'll see where there's that orange block, box. And let's say you've discussed and you um, have determined um, that this picture makes us think that we will learn about and maybe about the brain. For example, maybe you all discuss and that's what you agree that you think this picture makes us think, oh, we're going to learn something about the brain. Okay. Um, and that's all you're going to do at this point because we're just making the prediction. So you can see at the top of that column, it says pre reading, make a prediction of how the picture relates to the text that you will be reading. Corey, do you see on the left hand side? Could you scroll to the left and maybe you guys can see it? Um, there should be some group roles there. Okay, so one of the things when we put kids in groups, we want to make sure that everybody has a job. And so um, there's some group roles there that you are going to establish really quickly in your uh, breakout rooms. Person number one, and I apologize, I see there's a typo on the numbering, but the first thing you're going to do is the person with the first name closest to the letter A is going to be the recorder. And so you're going to be the one that's typing. Um, the recorder gets to choose the leader that will call on each individual of the group to give input. So you get to pick who speaks when and you're just going to call on them and they're going to share their idea. The leader is going to choose a summarizer. So the summarizer's job is to summarize the group's thinking after the leader calls on everybody. The summarizer is going to summarize their thoughts and tell the recorder what to write. And then lastly, if you have four people in your group, the summarizer is going to choose an editor that makes sure that the input is accurate. So if I were doing this with my students, I would go over that in much more detail. I might even um, provide like a quick example of each, but since we're adult learners, um, I think we're ready or what can I explain better? 
Okay, so again, please pay attention to your breakout room number. That's the slide that you're going to go to to complete. And we're just going to do the pre reading portion. And so I'll give you about two minutes. And then when we come back, I'm going to have you share your predictions. Well, it looks like Corey's working on those breakout rooms for us. Okay, they should be open. Okay, thank you. Okay, did everybody make it back? I think, okay. So um, every time we do breakout rooms or we send somebody, I don't know if you guys feel this way, but it's always like, did it work? Not sure, obviously in two minutes, I didn't have time to get to nine different groups. So um, we're going to say that the first picture um, of the guy is picture number one and going down picture number two is the little bridge and picture number three is the purple thing. So I've got some dice or die here in my hand. I'm gonna roll them to see what breakout room shares. And the leader, uh, whatever person was the leader, gets to, and uh, some of you may, yeah, may need a little more time. I'm seeing it that. Um, and we're going to revisit this again in just a minute. So if you needed more time, maybe you could just share what your, uh, kind of what you talked about or what you think that the other two pictures might represent in the text we're going to read. So I rolled, yep, a... 10 minus one, breakout room nine. Do we have so, the leader in breakout room nine? I don't know who our leader was, but it was me, Jance, and Rebecca Beardsley. Okay, awesome. I, I'll do the leader. I'll, I'll do Thank it. Thank you. <laughs> um, so our first prediction, we predict that, wait, are you on a slide? Yeah, that we predict about, it'll be about the brain, because it's brain's going. And then um, transfer knowledge or transferable skills for the second one. And then international communications was our, five second guess for the last one so <laughs> fantastic or prediction not guess prediction rather i love it fantastic thank you so much three claps for breakout room nine all right we're gonna have one more share and it's gonna be breakout room number one please so i was in breakout room one but um we were just figuring out how everything works. But we did talk about that um, the first picture makes us think of the brain. Okay, awesome, thank you. Now, if I were doing this in my class, I would give them more than two minutes. Um, it's We wanted to kind of share with you the process. We wanna make sure we can get through everything we're trying to get through. But yes, I would give my kids more time to finish. Um, but that's the first step of this visual prediction reaction guide is to get them talking and using the pictures to help them try to predict what they're gonna read about. So Corey, can we go back to our presentation piece, please? And we're going to look at our next step. Um, so one more. One more slide. Okay, perfect. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to read an article. We're going to have about five minutes to read an article. And you're going to uh, read this independently. And um, you're each going to get your own copy. So if you want to mark it up, you can. Again, with my own students, I'm going to know them um, and know their reading, uh, how fast, how slow they can read. So hopefully you'll get through the majority of the article. And then at the end of five minutes, we're going to come back together and we're going to process um, what we read about in breakout rooms with the remaining part of the prediction reaction guide. So I'll set a timer for about five minutes. If it's more comfortable for you to turn your video off while you're reading, that's totally fine. And we'll let you know when five minutes is up. Corey's going to put the link to that article in the chat for you. Thanks, Corey. Yep, and that link will force you to make a copy, but you should just have to click on the blue button in order to do that. Yes. Oh, except so, okay, that go ahead. Just went to one person. <laughs> Yeah, to go to everyone. The article to be read to you, you will have that option. There's a little icon, um, audio icon, and you can listen to it as well. Okay. It is perfectly okay if you didn't finish all of the article. Um, we are modeling the process 
Again, I know I, I keep saying this, but if I were doing this with students, I would ensure that they had enough time. Um, and maybe it would be um, like just the amount of time that it took for them to listen to the text, depending on your kids, okay? But we're gonna go to the next one just so you can process through the strategy itself. And so with the visual prediction reaction guide, we're gonna go to that um, again, the one that you just saw. And now we're looking at the reaction piece. And so um, this is going to be our post reading. So you're gonna see the, the remaining two columns. For post reading, it says, what did this picture have to do with the text? What did this picture represent? So the idea is that we make predictions, um, we activate some background knowledge with the pre-reading, and now we're going to synthesize some information. We're summarizing in, in our head the big ideas from the text, and now we're relating it to the visual. And so maybe in your group, you um, discuss the text and you think, for example, that this picture uh, represents cognitive rigor. And so that's what I would put. This picture represents cognitive rigor that occurs when we promote deep understanding. And that was from the first section of the text that I read. That's what it made me think it would, would represent. And then on the next piece, that's the vocabulary. So now we're really bumping up our critical thinking. And this is where we're having students select at least one content related vocabulary word from the text that you would use when describing the picture. And so the sentence frame says my word from the text is and I'm going to choose collaborative discourse. My word from the text is collaborative discourse. And it's going to, um, it relates to this picture because, and if it runs over, that's fine. I can always change the font and make it smaller. Um, it relates to this picture because collaborative discourse can lead to deeper understanding. And my picture, I said, is deeper understanding. Okay, and so what we're going to have you guys do is just to practice in, in with the process is um, for time's sake, we're, we're going to have you process just one of those two pictures that are um, that I didn't model. So either the transfer bridge or the um, the one down below the purple with the students in collaboration. And so um, we're going to go back to those same breakout rooms, you'll have the same group roles and um, you'll choose the one picture that you want to further process and just complete the post reading and the vocabulary activity. Um, we'll give you about three to four minutes. And then when you come back, we'll do kind of as before and just have you share what you put down for your post reading and your vocabulary. Okay, so thank you so much. Um, any questions that I can explain, you can just unmute real quick. Also, you can ask for help if you're in those breakout rooms and you need some help, just raise your hands. All right, we'll see you in about three and a half minutes. We'll give you a four by the time you get there and back. Okay, thanks. Oh, cool. Which, yep. yeah. so. Okay. Okay. So I think we're all back again with my kids. I'm going to give them more time if I feel like they need it. I would also give them time to complete um, all of the task. But I just want to see uh, or hear what one of your groups said. So we'll see who the lucky group is. It's group number three. I was the recorder for group three. Yay. All right. When oh, great. I don't know. <laughs> We said that the we were looking at the third picture. We mm -hmm. demonstrate students collaborating and sharing ideas, and our vocabulary word is collaborative discourse. Because you can see they are working together. Okay. Great. And the text also talked about how um, in order for students to increase their deep and deepen on their understanding, we have to have them collaborating. Right. So awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Three claps to group number three. Um, we appreciate that. Now, for time's sake, we're going to move on. Um, in my own class, I would share, I would have a few more groups share out this activity. We could also do, you wouldn't have to just do three pictures. I just chose three because that's what I could fit on the slide and for our time, but you can do this um, 
in a variety of different ways. You could have um, less pictures, you could have more pictures, you could do this face to face as well. And um, ha it wouldn't have to be on Google Slides, it could simply be the pictures that you just discussed, or it could be a handout. So there's a lot of different ways that you could do this. But the um, the important piece is that they are connecting some background knowledge, they're doing the post reading, um, and then they're selecting that vocabulary and using it correctly. You could also do, pick instead of the picture, you could take a snippet, this was Corey's idea, take a snippet of a text, so maybe a line from the text. So they're making a prediction, then they're actually um, going back and telling you what that line from the text um, actually was about. So. We're gonna go um, to the next piece of our presentation though and have another strategy for collaboration. And that's going to be one that you liked or that you were interested in, Word Splash. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this one that Angeline, the visual prediction action guide that Angeline was going over um, is something that you would do quickly before a text reading and then during reading or post reading. And so the one that we're going to do now is um, called Word Splash. And the, the purpose of this collaborative structure is to summarize learning. So you could do this strategy after a lesson, or you could use it specifically with a text or with some sort of video, just whatever you're using to get your kiddos to learn. So the way we're going to accomplish this is you'll be working again in a breakout room and you need to note your breakout room number because again, we're going to be using a slide deck. So if you're in breakout room three, you'll go to slide three. You're gonna to wanna to read instructions carefully and then share your sentences. And so I will show you a picture of what the word splash looks like. So our learning, the words that you're going to be thinking about are from our learning today at this r, &R. So anything that, we, that you heard from the input maybe the questions we've asked from the 10 twos on Pear Deck, um, the article that you read, the visual prediction reaction guide, or any of the conversations that you've already had in your breakout rooms. So just based on our whole lesson today, um, you are going to be, that's what your, your words are going to be based off of. So if I'm working in a group of four, um, I we'll just choose that I'm going to be the person typing in the pink boxes. And so I will think about some words that I think relate to our um, learning today. And so one that really stands out to me is collaboration, also academic language. Also remember that I want to make sure to use clear directions or instructions, etc. And so I will type four different words or phrases in one color. And then my teammates, for example, if Angeline was in my team, she would choose a different color. Maybe she'd be typing in the blue. So once we all have our words uh, typed in here, then as a group, you are going to work to type your two to three summarizing sentences in this text box using all of the keywords. Um, so if Angeline also typed in collaboration, we don't need to use that word twice. We'll just use it one time, but we could say something like, um, what I could type one key to collaboration in the classroom is encouraging academic language and providing clear instructions. So we're just using all the words in our word splash to formulate some summarizing sentences from our learning. So also if you slide over here to the left, it does tell you the instructions. So are there any questions you have about how to do this structure or what I can explain better? I am putting this link in the chat. Oh. I keep just chatting to one person. There we go. So there is the link to the slide deck, and then I'm going to send you to your breakout room, and you will have about, let's say about um, five or six minutes to work with your group. Okay. 
I hope that we didn't rush you too much. We were popping or just looking at some of your slides as you were working and you guys um, came up with some really good thinking. So we're just gonna have one group share out and it's going to be five plus two. Group seven, please. And I'm on seven. You're on seven, okay. I was the leader, so I'll share what we were writing. Um, through collaboration, students will have roles to challenge high-level high thinking and develop academic language um, to support uh, high-level thinking and develop academic language. Collaboration will produce productive struggle, rigor, and student ownership of their learning, mm -hmm. organization of the, of the plan, of the, of the teacher's plan will create depth of learning and good connections. Fantastic. Wow. That was excellent. Three claps. Nice job. Okay. Really well-crafted sentences with vocabulary. Love it. Yeah. And I was noticing that this group, this was a good idea. I think as they were typing their words, they were highlighting them. So they knew which ones they had used. That was a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, and I also wanted to point out, Angie and I were talking. So Word Splash and her visual prediction action guide, you don't have to use those in the same day. Like they're two separate strategies with different purposes. And so one may be appropriate for one lesson and the word splash may be appropriate for something else. Um, and the word splash too could be done in person. Um, we've had teachers using sticky notes for students to share words. Um, and maybe the, they write a sticky note and the teacher puts them on the board or however, um, you know, we can manage the collaboration with the social distancing. Um, again, this is just another structure that could be done virtually with the Google Slides or with um, or in person. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, now what we want to know is what is one strategy you learned today that you will commit to trying within the next month? And you can go ahead, it's multiple choice. You can click on one of the strategies you're most excited to try. And I will show the responses. We didn't give you an option to select none of them. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you have to choose one. <laughs> cool. So pair deck, pictorial input video. Awesome. Four prediction reaction. 13, 14 for word splash. I love it. Chunking breakout room tasks. One thing that and um I apologize if Corey just mentioned this. I was trying to keep up and make sure I was keeping up with the chat, but um, is that we wouldn't necessarily do the visual prediction reaction guide and the word splash in one day and keep going back and forth to breakout rooms so often. I think that it wouldn't be realistic in the time that you have um, if you're doing it virtual. But one thing to keep in mind is that Research is showing that in virtual learning, so for our secondary folks right now, um, instead of 10 2, it's more like a 10 or a, it's more like a 7 2. They're saying that to keep kids engaged, they have to be interacting with the learning every seven minutes. So, whether that's put something in the chat, go to a breakout room, um, respond in some way. So, just kind of keeping that in mind, but I'm loving it. 15 people are going to try the word splash. That's fantastic. Yeah. And, strategy. And one other thing I wanted to mention is that once we, um, once I'm able to download our participant names, I will send all of the slide decks to you. So the word splash, you can make a copy and use for yourself, make any changes, but um, hopefully that'll save some time for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so wishes and wants. So um, typically we do gots and wants and you can still do that, but what we would just like some feedback in the chat. So um, you kind of gave us a strategy that you got, which is kind of why we changed it to wishes and wants. So what are you wishing for in the um, in, in next R&R or for resources or what are you wanting? What can we do to further support the awesome work that you guys are doing? Um, and we'll use that to help us plan. Before you leave, if you could just help us with that. And then we have a claim code for you for your um, clock hours. 